People think of art as, as music, as paintings, as, as writing, but there's a lot to be said about food and beverage as an art and the experience that you offer there, the flavors, the memories that you offer. Every time you, you, you take a sip of a craft spirit, you get to experience what somebody has truly given their heart and soul to create, a piece of themselves. It's a very um, uplifting way to express yourself in a really, really cool, different way that we can communicate in an artistic sense. Frequently you run into folks that start up a beverage business or a restaurant or whatever it may be, and their goal is to be the best that's ever been made. And I think what's interesting here in Texas is that there's more of a collaboration and acknowledgement of the fact that we're taking steps towards a process and that it's an ongoing conversation. As long as you're being open and sharing and learning, you're creating products that aren't just better, but that are different, that have a reason for existing. You're learning, you're teaching people, you're sharing these experiences. To me, that's what really makes Texas whiskey special, is sharing of the knowledge and ongoing discussion. It's forced us to have those conversations and learn together. Texas distilleries, especially the whiskeys and the gins, take very seriously coming from a sense of place. There's Texas gin manufacturers like ourselves that make a gin that is, that is very reminiscent of the hill country. So taking a traditional London dry style gin, but replacing the ingredients with what is around us. Lavender, pecans, grapefruit, the things that make up what is Texas. And so I think that sense of place is what's really driven the growth of Texas craft distilleries over time. Here at Treaty Oak, we focus on using as much Texas grains as we possibly can. The support of using heirloom grains in addition to that ensures that Texas farmers aren't just growing one type of corn, that we're actually paying homage to the grains that have always been grown in this area. All of those offer different sweetnesses, different flavor profiles, and for us, really starts to also separate the conversation of what makes a good craft whiskey. The thing about making whiskey is you have control over so many different components of the product itself. The grains that you choose to use, be it rye, be it corn for a bourbon, be it a weeded bourbon, um, single malts with a malted barley. Um, you have control over the yeast that you use and the flavors that can produce. The one thing that you don't have control over if you're aging in a traditional rickhouse is the actual climate. And that's the single biggest influencer in making a whiskey. And so in Texas, we have a very different climate than you would see from around the globe with different Scotch, Japanese whiskey, even Kentucky bourbons that America is already very well known for. And the reason for that is our aging process is very different. A much hotter climate, much drier climate. So we see that aging create a product that is vastly different and that goes through its process and its life cycle much more swiftly than it does elsewhere. At first, we were using the same recipes that are used all over the world. But once we learned that we can't change the climate, we have to adapt to it and learn from it, we've learned how to create some of the best whiskeys that are being made in the U.S. and, and, and frankly in the world at this point.